Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to uh, this evening's grant-making event for the Valley Hometown Fund. Um, we're glad you're here, and, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be part, part of this event. My name is Brett Boggs. I'm the superintendent of the Tiffany Valley School Corporation, but I'm also a 1974 Mentone High School graduate, too, so I am a, a Valley alumni. Um, just to give you a little history, our inaugural uh, grant-making event of what was at that time known as the Valley Community Foundation. Uh, we held that May 7th, 2013. So three years ago, uh, we had a group of Valley alumni that, that got together and we awarded $2,500 in grants to five different community or school related organizations. And those were uh, the Akron Youth League, uh, Boomerang Backpacks, Prill School and the Fourth Grade Pioneer Day, uh, Little Free Libraries and Helping Hands. I'd like to, at this point in time, uh, take the opportunity to introduce some of the members of our, the members of our advisory board. And uh, when I introduce you, I guess I'd like, I'd like for you to tell us uh, the school that you graduated from and, and the year, if you don't mind. If, if you do mind, that's fine. But uh, go down through the list here. We have uh, Malia Gearhart and Malia. Valley class of 1976. So you're the second, 40 years. second class. <laughs> the second class of graduate? Okay, that's right. Um, Adam Heckman. Valley, 2001. All right, thank you, Adam. Let's see here, Michael Lukens. Uh, Tiffany Valley, 1999. Okay, thank you, Michael. Angie Miller. Valley, 1985. And Kim, Kim Miller. Um, Valley, 98. Okay. And let's see here. Mr. Parker, Darren Parker. Valley in 1997. Okay. Tyler Ross. I will be graduating this year. <laughs> okay, and Haley Whitaker. Valley, 2000. Okay, so I want to thank those folks uh, for your efforts in putting together tonight's event and uh, for the work that you've done in support of the Valley Hometown Fund. Just to give you a little bit of an overview this evening, um, in just a, a moment here, we'll introduce, uh, it says on your program there, Ron Newland, but uh, Ron's son got ill today. Ron lives in Indianapolis and can't uh, get up here. So Angie's going to take his place, Angie Miller, on the agenda. Um, so she'll be talking here a little bit. Uh, we've asked Jeff Schreiber to come and speak about one of the grants that was awarded three years ago to Pearl School. And then after that, uh, we will have each of the six projects come and uh, make a three to five minute presentation on their project. Um, following that, then we will divide up into, into tables and Micah will explain uh, how that's gonna work. Um, and then we'll continue on from there and uh, finish out our program by announcing the awards to the different projects and, and closing for the evening. So I'd like to, at this time, introduce uh, Angie Miller. Ron was kind enough to send me his words tonight. So um, my introduction was, my name is Angie Miller, and I'm a proud graduate of 1985 to Tippecanoe Valley, but we already covered all that. Um, I would like to share with you some background on the Valley Hometown Fund and the vision for its, pur its purpose and future. The Valley Hometown Fund is, is a discrete fund within the Fulton County Community Foundation for collecting donations and making grants for projects that specifically benefit students and the residents of the Valley School District. Several of us have been working for a number of years on ways to get the school system reconnected with its alumni, especially those have moved, that have moved away. There are over 8,000 of us in the last 40 years, and about a third of us still live in the school district, another third within a county away, and, but another third more likely live out of state or elsewhere, elsewhere in Indiana. Some of our efforts so far. Some classes have experimented with multi-year class reunions, trying to gather more people at one time. We had a social media site website back before you could even join Facebook, but you can now join our Facebook page to get reconnected. For several years, we've been identifying distinguished alumni and bringing them back to the community to speak to current students about career options. Last summer, we had an open house at the school to celebrate the school's 40th year. We've started to invite people to make contributions to the fund and periodically make grants for worthy projects in the community. 
We've raised over $5,500 overall, in addition to the donations that paid for last year's event, and, the two, and two years ago, we did grant $2,500. And tonight, we're asking for your help in giving away another $3,000. What's ahead for the Valley Hometown Fund? We would like to do this every year in greater and greater numbers. To do this, we need to be more systematic about soliciting contributions from every alumni, from every class, and especially for those who have moved away and are already supporting the community in a dozen different ways. Now let's hear from a success story of one of our grantees, our Prale School Project, received money in our first round of granting. Jeff Shriver will give us an update on this community project. Hey, again, thank you uh, to the grant committee for uh, providing the grant uh, two years ago. And we used that, like we said we would, to um, do some things at Pruill School. And history is, is something that, uh, um, you know, is uh, in our community every day. It's something that not everybody has a passion for. And this is a project that allowed our high school students to connect um, with a school that was at one point part of the Tipping Valley School Corporation um, and then was given to, uh, deeded to an organization, the Prill School Society, uh, which just through the years kind of went defunct. It was in uh, dilapidated repair. Uh, we had a couple work days out there, did some things. Then we said, what are we going to do with Pearl School? And we decided let's um, go back and sort of reinvent the fourth grade history day that so many people participated in when they were students at Akron and Mentone. And so we've done that the last several years with the help of, of this organization and others. And these are some slides that show that. And if we click through them a little bit, you'll see some of the things that we did. Um, Again, we had uh, individuals conduct a blab school session in the Prill School, um, and, and we at, at this point we peeled apples, which I'll say, you know, was um, a little nerve-wracking first time. Akron kids did great for whatever reason. Mentone kids needed some band-aids. We now have the old-time <laughs> apple peelers that we bought with uh, with some of the funds, so that we have those. So we have we still have some equipment that we're using. Um, they, they came from this, but the kids had a great day. Uh, the fourth grade classes, there you are, we made apple butter, braided rope, and, and Brett, if you want to click through, I know, you know, time here. Um, you kind of see there, they're, uh, they're shaking butter uh, in, a, in a mason jar rather than uh, with a churn, and that takes a little bit of time. The kids really enjoyed this. Our high school kids research not only what um, or how to do these things, but why, and they explain why they had to make butter, why they pulled taffy, why they had to make, that you didn't just go to the store and buy these things. So it really is a history lesson, and with our bicentennial in the state this year, uh, we're going to be um, conducting the Prill School Day in the next couple weeks um, at Akron, and then uh, toward in the middle, I think, next month at Mentone. But we've got those scheduled again. So um, made candles. Um, and the kids really, this is a, a, a self-driven, um, our students at the high school came up with the things, the, the skills that they wanted to, to uh, teach and uh, research that and then presented it. Great experience had by um, our students at the high school and by the fourth grade students at Akron and Mentone. So um, just an overall neat day and we thank you for your support uh, in making this happen. Anybody, any questions? Huh? Okay, there you go. So, so some of your kids in the, in the, made them famous. Channel 4 did a great job uh, covering us. We actually have a video of this uh, day from a couple years ago. Um, just a really neat experience um, we brought in, and, and we'll bring back uh, um, Mr. Zeiger, a guy named Todd Zeiger from Indiana Landmarks Association, to speak to our class. Uh, we're working to preserve the structure of Prill School this year as well. So it's an ongoing project. Uh, we need a roof on the school, and uh, we've got some, some local people in the community right now that are helping to preserve the, the actual structure of the school as well. 
Inga's dad. <laughs> so, any questions? Yes. Do you invite any of their parents to come and observe or participate? You know, we, we didn't, but we did have several uh, show up. Um, and, and with the permission of, it was at Akron, Akron parents took some pictures and did some things. Um, and uh, the teachers at Akron and Mentone both did a really good job promoting this to the kids and to the parents, and the kids came in sort of in costume, if you will, um, tried to dress what their vision of a pioneer student was. Mr. Schreiber, I think the yes. Channel 4 has presented, like, um, videotaped, and so RTC has been there. Um, so they've kind of seen a little window of what that looks like, too. Awesome. My daughter's sitting out here and she's like, that was the best day. That was All so right. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes. Where, where is Prill School located at? <laughs> oh, you would ask me the address. North, um, south, down here. Yeah, it's, it's uh, on the Fort Wayne Road. So just down the road from here, a couple miles. Okay. Um, but. Uh, I appreciate your picture of the well, hand pump well. I've drawn some water out of that. Mike is a neighbor across the road. It, it gets a little dusty in the field, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, thank you very much because uh, of your generosity. We touched the lives of a, a, lot of, a lot of students, both high school and elementary. So, thank you. All right. At this time, uh, we're going to call up representatives from each group. Uh, each group will have three to five minutes to explain what their project entails. The committee spent some time over the past month and uh, sorted through some applications. The applications were due April 1st, and we were able to um, narrow down our applicants, despite having several um, very good applicants who did not quite make the cut. Um, we do have six representatives here this evening who will receive at least $100 in funding, and that's we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, we're going to discuss, um, have each group discuss, again, in a three- to five-minute presentation, what, the, what exactly they are trying to accomplish. The first group that w the first person we'll call up is Jenny Shear. Jenny is a reading interventionist at Mentone Elementary, and their group is seeking $1,392. Okay. Um, uh, my job at Mentone Elementary School is to help organize and instruct uh, our guided reading groups or swoop groups, they, they are often called. Um, that means that the K through, it's kindergarten, first and second grade students go to reading groups four days a week. And this is just an awesome program that I am so lucky to be a part of and to help with. But in order to do that, um, we need a leveled library. And we have a really good leveled library. I've, I've never been one to complain and I, I don't never really asked for too much. But over the years, as I've done the kindergarten and first grade and helped a lot with that, um, I really see a need for more lower level books. And that's one of the keys to the level library is that, or to our, to our lessons, is that the books are leveled appropriately for the students. And kindergarten students um, come in pretty needy for the most part. And most kindergarten students stay at a level A, B, or C most of the year. And um, it doesn't sound like a lot of growth, but considering where they come and, and where I think most of them end at the end of kindergarten, it is a lot of growth. But again, it's levels A, B, and C. And those books are really not always easy to come by. What's labeled as an easy reader book in lots of stores or libraries, it's not as easy as you'd think. So these are, well, I'm kind of particular about books that are leveled correctly and that are good for our kindergarten readers. Um, in kindergarten, the kids have approximately about 96 lessons throughout the year by the time they start and the time they end, and each lesson has a new book. So that means 96 new titles throughout the year. So they really need lots of good books, or we need lots to choose from. Um, one of the biggest uh, literacy goals that we have is to create confidence in the experience of being successful. And in order to do that, they need books, again, at their level. So I brought a few examples. I mean, to think about the level of library. Our library is a 
big long room with um, lots of shelves and lots of book sets like this. So one set has six books in it of the same title. And that would be like for one day for a group, for a new book. And um, a couple examples I wanted to share. Just We do have lots of good books, but we have lots of books that I pull from the shelf and I go, don't like that one, Ew, don't like that one. <laughs> um, they're just not really good books. Um, you know, these book kind of books are okay. You know, it's like they're all right. Uh, there's not a lot of words and not a lot of good words that they're going to learn and use over and over. Uh, this book, again, is okay. Not real engaging for students. But the kind of books that I would like to see more of um, are books like this. And we do have a lot of nice books like this. And these books have real pictures of real people doing real things. And not only do they help the students that um, are struggling to read, maybe not interested in reading, but this is interesting to them. This brings kids out of their shell. Oh, I've been, oh, I've seen, oh, we have one of those. Oh, I've done that. And ESL kids, vocabulary. It's huge to see real pictures of real things. So, um, and another good example of just a good book. So these are the kind of books I want more of, and I want levels A, B, and C for, our, for not only myself, but the teachers and the instructional assistants that help these kids and pick books every day for the lessons. And I just brought another example. This book was okay in its day. It's been taped. It's been stapled. It's been, these books go home with students every night. So, you know, even with the best care, they get torn and worn out and ready to be replaced. So my hope is just to get some money to be able to provide better new books for our kindergarten students through our and to use in our SWOOP program. Any questions for Jenny while she's here? I just don't know that much about Mantone. Do you have preschool up there? <laughs> we do have. Um, in our building, there's a Head Start preschool. <coughs> there's a special needs preschool. And just this year, there's a new preschool program um, called, well, it's a high scope curriculum. It's kind of new. Um, it's been done at Warsaw, and, and we have it new at our school this year as well. So we have lots of preschoolers in the building that hopefully will come to kindergarten there next year, or a lot of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jenny. Next, we ask Mr. Chris Beal, pastor of Mill Creek Missionary Church, to come forth and present on their topic, which is the miracle tree. Again, my name is uh, Chris Beal, lead pastor at the Mill Creek Church in Rochester, Indiana, and we thank you for the opportunity to be able to share a little bit tonight. Um, the miracle tree is an, or or is a, an opportunity um, at around Christmas time to engage uh, families in need uh, within the community, specifically kids in need uh, within the community of uh, Fulton County. And uh, we have been a part of that program for the last 10 years. We're not exactly sure how it started. Um, it used to be in cooperation with the Welfare DCS office in the library. But in 2005, when the library in Rochester was being uh, was under remodeling, uh, pretty heavy renovations. They were not going to be able to do the tree that year. And so we decided we would um, kind of take that on. Uh, the tree is at uh, Shepherd's Chevrolet uh, in Rochester. Um, and for the last four or five years, um, after w the welfare office and the DCF office split, uh, we have started an application process for families. And so we work through the schools in Rochester and here in Akron with uh, Deb Miller. and pass those applications out or give those to families that they know are in need. We average anywhere from 130 to 160 families every year that are on the tree. 300 to 400 kids are, are typically on that tree. And the last few years, since we now have information from them because they fill out an application, uh, we have hosted a dinner at the uh, Rochester Middle School. We cater a dinner in for these families. Uh, we get inflatables in the gym. Santa Claus is there. Um, it's just a fun night for the kids. We have a game room that is, that's set up. This year we did something a little bit different and we had uh, Heidi Melms from Chameleon Studio Photography came in and uh, she took family photos. She donated her time, took family photos uh, for these families. And I think and we all understand that we live in communities where people um, are, you know, struggle. Uh, we have families that are considered working poor. Um, so they don't get to do things like take family photos. And uh, especially at Christmas time, 
which is a very obviously stressful time of the year for families that are struggling financially. Uh, this offers an opportunity to give them um, some uh, hope. It gives them an opportunity to, to have uh, a Christmas, and uh, it's just a really neat opportunity. So our focus has been Fulton County, and so that includes Akron, and that includes Akron Elementary. We were approached uh, last year about the possibility of starting a second Miracle Tree that would include the Valley School District as an, as an entirety. Um, and so in talking about that and discussing it, uh, the suggestion was to, to at least bring that before this group, share with them a little bit about it, um, to build some awareness. There's some logistical things that we still have to work through and how that would work to do two of these. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't scare us because it allows us to grow the impact and the, the opportunity to reach more kids and help more kids. Um, and so, in all honesty, as a church, we just do a lot of the back-end administrative work. It's the members of the community that come into Shepherds and take the names of these kids and, and purchase the gifts and take the time to do all that that really makes this thing work. We don't, we don't, you know, we're not, we're just the champions of it. And uh, we're the ones that get to do all the administrative work. Uh, it's really the community that is involved in, uh, in helping uh, these, uh, these families out. So it's a neat opportunity um, that we get to be a part of every year. And so we're looking at expanding this program to include the, uh, the whole district uh, of Tippecanoe Valley. Um, so where it goes from there, we're, we're not sure. We're excited to see what, what's going to happen. So. Any questions for Pastor Beal? You said, go ahead. You go ahead, you're first. <laughs> that it relies a lot on community. Yes. So if you're funded through this, where will that money go? Um, if, if we receive any funds here, that would entirely go towards starting a new tree here with the Valley District. We budget our church, and I'll just be very open and honest, we budget every year seven to $8,000 uh, to fund this program, to fund the dinner, uh, the party, all the things that go into that night, um, and some other you know, logistical things that happen before the actual event. Um, going into to doing something new here, we don't know what that's gonna be. You know, we, we know that we'll probably see some numbers peel off of the Fulton County tree that we do in Rochester, because we'll start seeing some of those families like from the Akron area that would be a part of the Valley Tree, but we don't really have any idea what what funding is gonna, you know, how that's gonna look. Um, but again, we, we're, we're not, that doesn't scare us. We just, we're ready to do something uh, to continue to grow that impact. So, but the funding here would all be directed towards uh, the start of this, this, new, this new program here in the district, so. Oh. <laughs> Rochester will not get any money. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At this time, if we could have Bryston Canada, Eagle Scout candidate, and junior at Tippecanoe Valley High School, along with Andy DeVries, chairman of Akron Parks Board, come forth. They're going to speak about mm -hmm. Paw Print Park. And also for the Mill Creek Missionary Church, their total project estimate is $6,000. The Paw Print Park total estimate is $9,254. Uh, as we stated earlier, uh, my name is Andy DeVries, and I'm with the Park Board um, here in Akron. Uh, I want to give a real quick uh, history of our project. Uh, we did a town survey, and uh, one of the things on the survey that the town wanted to see was a dog park. Um, it was one of our top five um, projects. Um, through word of mouth, we heard about Bryson um, looking for a community-minded project to get involved in for his Cub Scout, uh, Eagle Scout project which I'll let him talk about. Um, it worked out really good for us. Um, we had the project and he had the, uh, the initiative and the drive. So um, I wanted to just say real quick, um, this guy's made a lot of uh, improvement in, um, from day one until today. He's kind of exceeded our expectations as a board. 
and uh, we're really excited to uh, work with him. It's been a pleasure. Um, on behalf of the Park Board, I'd like to uh, thank the, um, the Hometown Fund Committee. Um, it's, a community, it's a small community, but it's really nice here. I grew up in a town like this. It has kind of fizzled away, and uh, this town has kind of thrived in, in all that due to um, projects like this. So I'll let Bryson go ahead and uh, take it from there. All right, so I'm Bryson Canada. Um, I'm a junior at Tiffany Valley High School. So, so a little bit about me. Um, yeah, I've been a community member, been living in Akron since I was born, pretty much. I've lived here. Um, I'm a Boy Scout since I've been Cub Scout. I've been involved in scouting since the first grade. I started out as a Cub Scout here in Akron, um, Tiger Scout, and I've advanced through the ranks. I'm a Life Scout now. I'm working on Eagle Scout. I have one more merit badge to go, plus an Eagle Scout project, uh, junior at Tiffany New Valley High School. I'm a member of the golf team there, Coach Parker, he, he can vouch for that. <laughs> um, I'm a member of the FFA as well here at Valley. I'm also active in my church youth group at, uh, in the, at Rochester, the Cross. So what is Paw Print Park? Paw Print Park is, it's going to be, a, it's well, my Eagle Scout project in conjunction with the park board here. Um, it's just a dog park for the Akron community, uh, like he touched on. The, they did surveys and they uh, saw that the community wanted a dog park, and I kind of liked that idea, so um, I went with it. Uh, safe, and it's just going to be uh, just a safe place for dogs to go outside and kind of roam around. Um, why did I choose a dog park? Um, it's community inspired and I, I go to, I, my troop is based out of Winona Lake, and I just really wanted to do something for my community, and this is something that uh, we, they've, we've heard that they wanted, so that's kind of my, uh, why I wanted to do a dog park here. And it enhances the community a little bit. Uh, dog parks are the number two amenity people search for when looking for a new community to uh, call home. Uh, schools are number one. So, uh, uh, yeah, supplies required. Uh, fence is the big part here, but we got that pretty much covered. Um, I'm asking for funds for some of the agility items, trash cans, benches, building materials for some of the agility items, and signage, just like rules, stuff. Um, how is Paw Front Park being funded? It's, um, it's received donations through word of mouth and presentations like this. Uh, earlier I did a presentation to the Lions Club uh, here. Donation letters, we sent out 125 of those and have gotten pretty good results from those through the community. Um, donation boxes, I've sent out a couple of those at local vets, uh, Deerdorf's and one in uh, Silver Lake. Uh, submitting grant applications like this one and just material donations. They hardware, they donated some things for me for this. When and where, it's going to be Cutshaw Park over its southwest corner here of Akron. Um, behind the laundromat, it's an old, old Boy Scout reservation, actually. It's going to be down, down there. Um, some things that are already there, there's a BMX trail, community garden, and a skate park. Some, uh, there's going to be, Andy over there is working on making a disc golf course as well down there. So it's going to be developed, and there's going to be some cool things down there. Sledding Hill. My, my win, I have to have it done by my 18th birthday, which is in August. So I'm, I would, I'm hoping for some time in July, give me a month. Um, what it look like, it's about 600 feet of fence that's going into this. Agility items will be placed throughout both sections. Uh, there's two sections, one for uh, small dogs and large dogs to keep them separate so big dogs don't hurt the little dogs. Um, yeah, and thank you for your time here and listening to me ramble on a little bit here. Um, appreciate it, and that's all I got. Any questions for Bryston or for Andy? For the maintenance, it's, it'll be the town. They said they would uh, keep up with that. They already mow back there, so it wouldn't be too much for them to. Thank you. At this time, I ask Mrs. Lindsay Smith to come forth.
special education paraprofessional at Tippecanoe Valley High School. She will speak about the Tippecanoe Valley High School special education prom fund and they seek donations of $1,500. My name is Lindsay Smith. I am a special education paraprofessional at Tippecanoe Valley High School. I'm also a 1999 graduate. Um, I've been a special education paraprofessional for the corporation since 2008 and I've been at the high school since 2010. Um, I did not start this fund that I'm presenting to you tonight, however, um, it was well established when I got there, but it's one that's near and dear to my heart. What it is, is we have, um, we noticed around prom time in the special education department that there were kids with certain disabilities and um, financial burdens that were not going to prom and because of these reasons, and we felt that this should not be um, a factor when it comes to these children and inclusion and normalcy. Um, with their peers. So we established a special education prom fund and what it is is we provide everything that a child would need to have um, this experience for prom. Um, we provide their dresses, tuxes, shoes, accessories. We have a former staff member that provides an elegant dinner for them that they actually have to train for with manners and etiquette. Um, we have parents that will supply corsages from general ed students. Um, we provide transportation to and from prom, and we've even had some general education students um, join us in the past, you know, to help us out with this. How I, how I normally fund this is every payday, I choose a restaurant that's local, and I collect um, my fellow staff members' lunch orders. I go around with a couple of my life skills students, and we um, take the money. This also teaches them common courtesy, um, give and take of customer service, you know, they help count back change. And in return for us delivering our lunch, their lunches and stuff, they give us tips. And we live off these tips in order to pay for um, the boys' tuxes, which are usually about $100 each. Um, I take the girls to Cinderella Dress Day with a few of my other staff members. Um, they receive a free or, um, they receive a free new or slightly used dress, prom dress, and then we pay for their shoes and accessories. Um, what used to be just a handful of kids, as you can see here, that would just need tuxes and dresses for prom has quickly grown into something that I knew would far surpass anything that I could ever pay for on my own. Um, we, like this year, we had 14 girls go for Cinderella Dress Day, and we paid for six boys' as tuxes. I did not have this in my account, even with doing the um, tips and through little donations or little um, fundraisers that the life skills class had put on throughout the year, we still were only maybe $400 in our account. So I reached out to the Kosciuszko Community Foundation and they in turn gave us a grant for $1,300. This paid for everything that we needed this year for prom and in fact left a little bit left over for us to call around and we were able to get a discounted um, limo service. These kids are beyond excited about this limo service. I think it's because they are mainly terrified of my driving um, <laughs> because they are just beyond excited. <laughs> um, but the, the, the largest group I helped out this year was our junior class and the sophomore need is going to be even greater. And um, I don't want to ever have to turn away a student that cannot financially afford to go um, to prom because I couldn't pay for them. Um, one thing I want to make mention that it's not about the prom experience itself. It's that these kids, some of these kids um, come from very, very um, poor circumstances. Um, and they, the sense of normalcy and where they don't have to worry for a night um, is huge for me. And this is the reason that I do it. Um, I'm going to share two of my, two of my favorite stories quickly. Um, the first one is in 2013, we took an autistic girl to prom and she had the cognitive ability of about a three-year-old. Um, without us, she would not have been able to go to prom and she actually wound up winning prom queen that year. Um, my second and my most favorite story and the reason that I keep doing what I do is um, we had a former student as well come from very dire circumstances, um, no running water in her, her house or anything. We got her um, all set up for prom already. She was tears and hugs and smiles the whole entire night. We get so many thanks um, from these kids. They're so grateful. Um, she was so happy all night, carefree, um, nothing but thank yous to all of us. It was about a month later that she was removed from her home 
um, and placed into a different home. And it's the reason that I know that she had this experience where she was just carefree and a normal teenager for that night and a normal student. And that's the reason that I do this. And that's why I'm reaching out to ask for these funds. Um, I appreciate um, the opportunity that you guys have given me to um, receive some of this money. And um, I just, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Any questions? For <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you. This time we'll have, if we could have Mr. or Coach Jeff Shriver, um, club co-sponsor of the Tipkinu Valley High School Young Entrepreneurs Club and teacher at Tipkinu Valley High School, along with seniors Aaron Van Meter and Samantha Hamilton to come forward. They're going to present uh, for the Tipkinu Valley High School Young Entrepreneurs Club. Their total request is nineteen hundred dollars. And I'll kind of before they start, uh, I'll just give you a little background. For the last three years, we've been involved uh, with uh, the Casiasco Chamber of Commerce, Grace College, and Tipton New Valley, um, putting together a, a, a course where students can earn some dual credits and they actually create and. Um, manage, identify the, the pitfalls of, etc. of business. They go and they um, ask a committee um, to award them some seed money. <coughs> Through a series of events, uh, the Kosciuszko Chamber is not going to financially be able to support this next year. And so uh, it's going to change. It's going to look very different. And that's why we're here tonight because uh, we think it is a great opportunity for our kids, uh, but one that does take some uh, finances, and we are looking at some other ways to finance this as well, uh, but this is a great opportunity for us to ask um, you to invest in the young entrepreneurs in our own community. And with that, we'll let them talk to you. They're in the class this year, <clears throat> and uh, this is sort of based on their experiences this year um, and what we hope to continue but we need to find a way to fund it. Sorry in advance if my face goes red. We are not talkers. <laughs> We're the Young Entrepreneurs Club. That is our Mud Love field trip. It was really fun. And we developed our own business by getting help from Ms. Yazel and Mr. Schreiber a lot. And like our business, we did the golf balls. We named it For You, and we decorated golf balls so they were easier to find in the grass. And we provided proof. Those are our golf balls. <laughs> and we had to write business plans. My, We had to write our business plan like five different times because my tablet kept losing it and breaking down on me. And we had to do market research by having people try them out and testing them all the time. You better talk. Um, and then we targeted markets like we were looking at Callaway and Titleist because those were our two main competitions. And then we had to do our financial funds. And like, I don't know how to explain this one. And then we met with our mentors all along the way. We only met with our mentor, and once. mentor like once or twice because we always got sick when he came. <laughs> or when we were there, he was gone. And then we had to create presentations and like share them with our class. My face went real red in that. <laughs> and then we had to pitch our businesses to the investor panels. But this year only like six people got to go, not the whole classes. We were not one of them, thank gosh, <laughs> because we are not talkers. <laughs> 
And then that is them presenting. And then we have to do a taste and trade show if we want to, to promote our businesses. And then the winner gets money to fund their business in college. Like this year, Karis Tucker won with meat, golden meat. And then we get to set up our trade show here really soon if we want to do it. So you just have an overview of, of uh, what happens, but there's a, a lot that goes into it. Each, each group has a mentor from the community that uh, helps to guide them through the process. Um, as they pointed out, they have to come up with the financials of the business. What does it cost per one unit? Um, how do they manage um, employees if they're going to have employees? What happens? And right now, the winners uh, have an opportunity to, you may have read this in a paper, uh, they have an opportunity to go compete for a $30,000 scholarship um, out in New York. And Karis Tucker is going this year. Michael Thacker uh, was a winner last year um, and with the Invictus Photography. And this is a, a great program, we believe, but it's a program that's going to look different next year. And we're seeking funds to con continue the program. And probably the way we see it, um, you know, we would like to involve more of the businesses in our community um, and uh, involve maybe the Fulton County Chamber as well as the Kosciuszko Chamber. So, any questions for me or for? <laughs> it's a really fun class. <laughs> What's the most important thing you've learned from this? How to set up a business. I know a lot of us wanted to start a business, and then right after we learned all this stuff, not a lot of us wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> too much <laughs> but you appreciate what business owners do now don't you yes thank you last but not least um, at this time if mrs inga omandi instructional coach at akron elementary and mrs deb tillman Teacher, kindergarten teacher at Akron Elementary could come up. They are going to discuss the Akron Elementary Kindergarten program called Choice Time. The total contribution that they are seeking is $441. Towards the bottom, like it's an alphabetical order under hometown. Yep. Just slightly up. There you go. Okay, um, I am Ingo Mondi. I am an instructional coach at Akron. I'm also a 2000 graduate of Tippecanoe Valley. Kind of sowed my wild oats, came back in 2007, and I've been working um, in, then at Akron Elementary ever since then. So along with me, I have Deb Tillman, um, one of the kindergarten teachers who have helped implement um, our um, program called Choice Time, and so we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what that is. So. I got lots of words here. I want to read just a little bit. So what is choice time? So choice time is a unique spin on the traditional playtime or station work that happens in kindergarten. So it helps support our students who are non-native English speakers. Um, and many children spend six hours a day watching television. And when they're not plugged into television, children are plugged into maybe the iPod or computer or video games and so we saw these things happening at Akron Elementary and we said we need to do something they're lacking some skills that they need to be successful um, throughout their educational career and so we said okay what's the plan we did some research and everything led back to that that play is really important for our, you know younger elementary kids um, so we did some book studies, learned more about it, um, some, uh, some quotes here that kind of hold fast to this program is that um, play is the work of a child, and that's Maria Montessori said that. Play is the highest form of research, and that's from Albert Einstein. 
Play gives children a chance to practice what they're learning. Um, and that's from Fred Rogers. And also Fred Rogers said that play is often talked about as if it's a relief from serious learning. But for children, play is serious learning and play is really the work of childhood. And so that, with all those things in mind, we said, okay, how can we put that back into our day? So um, last year was the very first year that we, we um, scheduled a time that each of the kindergarten classes would utilize the space um, for choice time. And so there's different stations, and you can see here, you know, students, um, they're architects, they're constructing, they're working together, um, they're making a plan for what they're going to build. Maybe they're incorporating some of the things, some math lessons, maybe some, um, some reading um, stories that they um, intertwine to all these things. So, um, so they're discovering things through sink and flow in some scientific discovery stuff. Um, over there, um, we have them... Oh, they're, they're playing restaurant, and so they're acting, you know, as they're taking orders. Math is definitely a part of it, and so they're, they're adding, they're giving change back, you know, as kindergartners can do, just real simple. Um, and so then they're playing. And it, as you notice, in, in Akron, we have a high population of English language learners, and this sort of program really helps them because they're able to practice English within context with each other's with their peers and are able to expand their vocabulary so um together the kindergarten teachers and myself and mrs whitaker we sat down and we said okay what do we want these lessons to look like so it's you know nice that there's all these stations but we need to connect it to something higher too so the lessons that we developed um, really support social and emotional development. So, um, it, you know, for a student to be healthily, healthy, have healthy social emotional development, it includes um, that they are able to form and sustain positive relationships, um, experience, manage, and express emotions, explore and engage with the environment. And there's so there's other things. But um, each week there's a focus. So like the first one might be, um, you know, I can use words to solve my problems. Um, kindergartners, they struggle with that. And so we deliberately teach that. We model it. When we see it in those stations, we say, hey, look at how you are using words to solve your problem. That's exactly what you need to do. So it's not just station work. And, and, and play, it, it's also for a higher cause. So what we're, gonna, what we're asking for this money for is um, to build up our block station. Um, uh, we, ha we have a few blocks that have been donated, probably from me, <laughs> as my children have kind of outgrown some of this stuff. But we don't have anything like this. And so there's different sets um, where kids can um, use their imagination and maybe um, use it to retell some of their stories that they're learning in um, the reader's workshop. Um, anything else that you think? It's just a, a real good time for them to, you know, be creative. We want, um, we want children to learn to work together. You know, I know as they go in high school and stuff, you know, you have small group projects, you have, mm -hmm. these are small group projects. They have to, they have to get along. They have to, to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So communication is a big factor. Uh, they have to plan ahead, make sure people are included in the planning and in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, so that also is developing as they, as they go through these stations. Um, a few years ago, we needed to take out some of the fluff of kindergarten, what, what we called it, but it was essential things, cutting, pasting, things like that. This helps us get those things back in. They get to design things. They get to, you know, just use a lot of different ideas, help building fine motor at the beginning. We kind of move up with the skills that they need to do through these other things like Inga was talking about where, you know, 
we are developing those ways to get along and to interact and and how to include everybody in your group as they go through these groups. So it's a real important thing. Um, I guess I was included because, as you heard, I've graduated in 76. <laughs> it was proven way back then when we did this, and we kind of took it out, and now it's, it's coming back. And it's a, it's a very important thing because we've skipped that step that kids really need to get their hands on things and work with things and just create on their own and have the opportunity to, to uh, communicate and talk to each other in their own little groups. And as teachers, we can move around to those groups and kind of, you know, maybe turn the conversation if it needs to or, you know, get some ideas. What are you thinking about? So that's kind of our role as just kind of to, you know, monitor the room mm -hmm. and kind of see where, which direction things are going. We have for you if you have any. Are there questions? any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. That concludes our presentations about the different group projects that you will be um, thinking about within the next few minutes. Um, at this time, it's, it's a time of transition, one where we take what we've learned about the different projects and we decide how the money is going to be allocated. We've already established that we have $3,000 to give away here tonight. So it's the job of the people here in the room to determine how that money is allocated. Um, the way this, this will kind of work, each table, there are six tables in the room, excuse me, that have signs on them yellow signs. These signs represent each of the six groups who will receive at least $100 of donation here from our, um, from the groups that you've met with. Every group that came here tonight will receive at least $100. It's the duty of the people who sit at these tables to determine how the rest of the money is divided up. So for instance, we have um, six groups we have $3,000. That works out to each table will be responsible as a group coming up with how you're going to divide um, $500 up. 100 of it will already be to the group's name that's on your table. The other 400 will be however you see fit. Once those tabulations are done within your table, um, they will be turned in and will total up the total amounts that each group will get and we will present that amount here this evening. Thank you for your patience in uh, giving us a few minutes to, to uh, deliberate about the different projects. Obviously, had some good discussion and a lot, of, a lot of good projects to look at. I'd like at this point in time to introduce to you Mr. Brian Johnson. Brian is with the uh, Fulton County Community Foundation, and uh, he'd like to just share a few words about the foundation. So welcome, Brian. All right, well, thank you for having me this evening. Now, after you've just been through this exercise, I want to ask you a question. Is it easy to give money away? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it easy to so decide where that money goes? But it's hard to decide. It is. It Pe people always laugh at me until they experience the idea that it's difficult to give money away. And it's not that there's bad projects because all of these projects that are here this evening are very good projects. So when it comes down to it, it's a matter of deciding 
how much and where and things like that. So um, as, as Mr. Bogg said, I'm Brian Johnson with the Community Foundation. Um, we've been involved with the Valley um, Alumni and Valley Hometown Fund um, since 2006 when the idea was created. Um, and part of it was to make grants just like we're making tonight. But another part of that is um, growing the, the contributions and the funds to the point where an endowment fund can be created. And so what does that mean? Well, an endowment fund means that whether there's another dime given to a fund, whether you have another fundraiser or not, there is every year money available to be given away. What happens with an endowment fund is a gift is given, and instead of turning around and giving out that gift, that gift is used to produce earnings. And then every year, those earnings are given back to projects such as, such as you've already heard about this evening. So the beauty of that is that, yes, we can still do fundraising. We can still have people that contribute to this and have those funds go to be granted out. But um, once we get to the point of having an endowment fund, then those funds can be added to, or at some point, if the group says, you know what, we just can't raise funds anymore, but this endowment fund is sitting there earning money for this group to be able to be granted out in the future. So the beauty of that is the ongoing part of that and the, the constant supply of funding to organizations and causes in the community. And that's, that's the primary goal of the Community Foundation is to help organizations and groups um, create endowment funds that support causes within our community that are so vital to our, to our community. So um, one thing that I get to see on a day in, day out basis is working with organizations where there's volunteers that are doing things that wouldn't happen in our community. So to those of you who have come this evening and presented a project, thank you for being a part of, I always call it, who is somebody. Somebody should do this, somebody should do that. Well, thank you guys for being somebody. You said somebody should do this, and well, you know what, we can do this. So, um, so our goal is to help this, or this group build to that point of having an endowment fund so that those funds are um, available in an ongoing basis for the community um, to be used as determined by members of this group, people that are living here, that work here, that know the pulse of the community, that know what kind of needs are for the community. So um, I know there's, there's information that goes out regularly. If you're curious about that, um, get with a member of the Valley Hometown um, Board. Um, I'm always available if you have specific questions. Um, they may need to contact me if you have specific questions about um, types of gifts or um, what we can do with the funds. So um, with that, thank you. Congratulations. I know some decisions have been made after much, I think somebody said gnashing of teeth and turmoil and things like that. But um, congratulations to the organizations that have been selected this evening. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing the results. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Boggs or Angie. <laughs> So before we hear those results, let's talk about some future opportunities. Of course, this would not be possible without donations. So we would like you to donate and to continue, continue to donate and donate again. So to make sure that the, that the handful of causes, make this one of the handful of causes that you give each year. We would like two people to consider a gift of $120, which can be set up um, monthly installments with the Community Foundation that Brian just described. We, we welcome gifts of size of larger or smaller than that amount. But most of all, we would like you to consider asking five friends or relatives to join you in making a gift, particularly some of your friends and relatives that have moved away. You can simply send them an email linked, or with a link to our Facebook page, or you can pick up a donation envelope at the TVSC Central Office. Here is our vision. In future years, we we think we can raise ten, twenty, or thirty thousand dollars. And Brian, remind me, what is an yeah. endowment <laughs> amount? Five thousand, Five thousand would make an endowment that we could grant from, with the goal being to give half of it, of it away immediately, and the other half to establish the permanent fund at the foundation uh, that would 
um, create additional earnings. We can make much larger grants each year, even start whole new programs. And finally, in the long run, we hope that some of the people who become annual donors who make their Valley Hometowns one of their top charities will also include the Valley Hometown Fund in their will. It's the game plan for the long run, but we've been a community for over 40 years, and this could make us an even better one in 40 more. Imagine Valley proportional to its, proportionate to its size in its own Lilly Endowment. You can help make that happen. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mike and I have the results. <laughs> I'm just going to go through and read what the six different tables were tabulated up for their giving so that each group knows what they will receive as a result of this, this evening's benefit event. At the conclusion of the event, after the prices are listed off, Mr. Boggs asks that you join him in the commons area for pictures and um, those types of things. First of all, Mentone Elementary School Leveled Library receives $450. Second, Mill Creek Missionary Church Miracle Tree receives $250. Third, Paw Print Park Akron Park Board receives $458. Fourth, Tippecanoe Valley High School Special Education Prom Fund receives $934. Fifth, Tippecanoe Valley High School Young Entrepreneurs Club, $583. And sixth, Akron Elementary Kindergarten Program Choice Time, $325. I'd like to thank each of you for your presentations this evening. And I'd also like to thank all of the people who gave the money that made this event possible to make our community a stronger place. Thank you. Doesn't Micah do a nice job with this kind of thing? Yeah, we're very, we're very appreciative of him uh, taking the role that he has. Thank you, Micah. Brian, we got a check for you. Come on up here. You know, uh, you mentioned there, Angie, the, the challenge of the $120 challenge. Don Craig stopped by the office today and dropped this off. He couldn't be here, but he wanted to contribute. So there's a donation to the Valley Hometown Fund. Yes, thank you. Well, I'd like to congratulate each of those projects. Uh, hopefully those funds will help and help you with your mission to accomplish the things that you have to do. I do want to thank our advisory board members for your faithfulness in, in uh, providing the leadership for the Valley Hometown Fund. And uh, we do look forward to continuing to pursue our mission um, and develop this community and, and support education, community development, the things that we're all about. Thank you for coming tonight, and uh, as Micah said, we would like to ask a representative or two of each project. If you would, let's meet out there by the fireplace. We'll get a nice picture, and then that will be it for this evening.